What's up YouTube, I hope you're all having an amazing week. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a rolling film slideshow, which is an interesting and unique way to show off multiple pictures really fast. If you're new here, kindly consider subscribing. If you end up enjoying the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, we're going to do this thing on After Effects. I've already dragged a couple of images, which I'm going to use just for demonstration purposes. These are a bunch of screenshots which I've taken over time making tutorials and I'm going to begin uh, making this composition. So we are going to create a new composition, just a 1920 by 1080 will be okay. Let's name this one a main composition, main comp. I want us to drag our film uh, overlay, the one which I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this and if you've watched one of my recent videos you've seen this folder and I found a way to improvise with this element. So I'm going to be using this film strip. It's easier when you can use such a film strip compared to this other one which is sort of very single. I'm going to be using this one which has sort of multiple placeholders. We're going to create a new composition and it's whereby we're going to create these placeholders. So let's name this new composition placeholder one. 1920 by 1080 preferably or whatever you want. So let's bring in our film strip right here. I'm going to scale it up to somewhere around here. And then I'm going to press P on my position to move it where I want it to. So that looks okay. I will lock this item and I'll bring in some of the images. So I'll bring uh, one, two, three, four. I'll bring four images right on my comp. Make sure uh, this locked, uh, make sure this stays at the bottom. I will also label to make sure that you follow along very well. So this is our background, let's not touch it and let's minimize every other one. So let's begin with this one, scale it down and then you can put it where you want it. I want it to stay about here. After this process, now I want to trim off the edges and parts I don't want. While selected on your image, uh, you can pick this rectangle tool so that you can make a mask around this. Now, if you want to be uh, perfect, we'll just reduce this opacity and then with our, our masking tool, we'll come right here. I'll just zoom in a bit and draw it right there. So basically we'll be doing this for all the photos and then I'll press T and I'll enable opacity back to 100. So this is a good starting point. Now I'll do the same for these other three entries. So that's it. If you've noticed, we've been able to place our media and our images very perfectly on this film because of that opacity trick and using our masking tool. Now what I want us to do, I want us to be able to move these items whether up or down on this uh, composition. Now remember, if we try highlighting on all of them and then sort of move them up or down, that's very possible. But if we tried to scale them up or down, they would all be doing something different. So if you want to be able to control everything, just right click, create a new null object. So this is not a very important step, but it's necessary in case you want to control these items. Create a null object and then parent all these to the null object. So now if I want to scale it up or down, I'll just use my null object. If I also want to move it uh, using my position, I can move it like that. Now remember, I'm avoiding these white items by having the media placed perfectly right there. Now I'll create a second composition. I will call it placeholder 2. So just a new composition, uh, placeholder 2. 1920 by 1080, that's okay. I'll bring in my film strip. It's right here. I will label it green. And then I will bring in some more photos. I'll bring in these four photos again. And then let me start, uh, I'll click here so that I can only see this strip. Then I will scale it up 
up to where I need it and using my position I will adjust it vertically now let's start uh, organizing these uh, layers let's start by this photo I'll place it right here scale it down a bit I will speed up this part because I've already demonstrated in the other one so let me just do it quickly Yeah, so that's it. We have the second placeholder and it looks okay. Uh, I'll do the same thing I did in the other one. I'll create a new null object in case I need to move them here. And then I'll parent all of them to this null object. This is just in case I need to move them. So now on our main composition, let me delete this strip, sorry. So on our main composition, this is whereby we'll be rendering this animation. On our main comp, I've ensured that it's, uh, you can use whatever settings you want, but I want to use a 1920 by 1080, which is the same uh, from these other ones. Now I'll drag the first placeholder and then I'll let it stay there. Once it's there, we need to animate such that it keeps on rotating horizontally. So go to your effect controls and look for a motion tile. Place it there. Keyframe the tile center. Come back here, you can press it so that you can see that keyframe. Go to the very end, uh, not to the very end, about four, five, six seconds. And then let it go a few, a couple of times. So if we watch it, so that's the basic animation which we really wanted. So I'll have it go a couple of more rounds in that uh, sort of fashion and then it should come back around here. So if we watch that, that's it. So you can also extend the time if you feel like it's going too fast for yourself. Yeah, just that way. Now I'll highlight on these two keyframes and then I'll select Easy Is and then right under the graph editor, make sure to be editing the speed graph and not the value graph. Highlight on these two keyframes and then bring them to the very, to the very middle. So this means that the keyframes will start slow and then they will go very fast and then very fast and then they will go slowly. So let's preview it. Okay, so that's some good movement. Now what we'll do, I will add the second uh, compositions from here. I'll bring in the second composition, placeholder, placeholder number two. Make sure it stays beneath and then drag it uh, using the position, you can drag it down. I'll have it uh, stay somewhere like that. Okay, so once you've placed it, we can also add the motion tile to it and then add a keyframe, make sure to enable the other side and then instead of going the same way, I'll go on the left hand side instead so that it's a little bit more sort of different from the other ones. So I'll put it at negative 4000 on the X axis. I'll highlight on these two keyframes, easy is. Again, do the same thing which you've done. And then I'll bring this right here. So if you look at it, so you can watch uh, the two keyframes and see how you how you want them to the disparity, how you want them to compare to each other. Yeah, that's good. Now we could create a third placeholder, uh, but I'll just duplicate the second placeholder right here. So I'll hit Ctrl D for the second placeholder and then I will move it up. I'll hit P on my keyboard and then I'll move it right up. Somewhere like there. And then I'll go to the uh, keyframes for it, for the tile center. I will invert them this time. I'll make sure uh, so that they are not very predictable. Yeah, so you can see they have this weird movement, which is really good. 
to the eye so that's the basic movement we wanted to create now if you want to transition between let's say here and then we want to zoom into one of these pictures and then zoom out of it we'll do something else so let's say we are at right this moment where everything stops so i will highlight on all the compositions and then i'll hit uh, my Control shift d and then i'll delete the excess so the composition will run from here to here i'll move these compositions a few seconds away now i want to decide on a picture which i'd like us to start with let's say we want to start with the picture of the girl on top of the truck so i'll go to my project bin and then under images i'll get the same picture here's the same picture i'll place it right here so here's the picture so we want to always start with the hd version of the picture compared to the one which we've just placed on these holders so while it's here i will just come about a few seconds Control shift d to delete the excess so we have this picture and then something else which is uh, super important we'll just add a small keyframe for scaling so that it's it starts with a uh, scaled in and then it scales out up to 100 so up to right about here is when we want the new composition to now follow along now before we can do that remember this is always a moving picture now at the beginning of this frame i will take a screenshot of my screen how you do that go to your composition go save frame as and select as a file and then choose the settings i just i will just put a jpeg sequence that's okay and i'll decide where i want it to be exported so i know it's kind of a long process but it's really worth it if you want to display any of your pictures you'll have to do this let's name this screencast one and then we shall export it so back on our main comp let's drag our picture so here's a screencast and then i'll drag it in our composition so that it starts right after this image and then right after this image we'll try to align this picture so let's start by scaling this since it's a very small file let's scale it first because it should fit perfectly on this first frame i will add a keyframe for scaling and position so i'll hit s hold shift and then i'll hit p i'll add these two keyframes now i want this to be our final result so i'll drag these keyframes right here now i want us to zoom into this image so if we scale in well and then move our position to the left we should be able to find our image right here you can scale it more if you really need to just so that it can fit perfectly onto this frame so it should move it should move from this hd version to the screenshot zooming out and then where it ends the composition now should continue so at this point i hit ctrl shift d and i'll delete that part and then i'll bring this composition right here make sure there is no uh space between these two so that it can be very clean so i'll click here and drag it i'll also do the same from this photo to this composition make sure there is no blank screen then i'll drag it right there i'll do it once once more so that you can understand the gist of it and where we are doing some things a certain way so after it has rolled for a couple of seconds i think at about six seconds I will bring in the new one so let's zoom into a different image this time we'll go we'll zoom into this photo right here so at this very point i'll hit ctrl shift d so that i can cut this part of this uh composition ctrl shift d delete the excess and remember at our last keyframe we need to take a screenshot composition save frame as as a file make sure it's a jpeg sequence and let's remember to be uh to organize our files screencast 2 so i'll render that out i'll bring it into our software and then i'll also drag it into our uh, composition now just as we did here you, you see we came from an hd version to the screenshot and then the video so after here we'll do the same thing after the video we'll come into our screenshot so let me just make sure you don't get confused i'll bring this screenshot right here i'll also cut out the excess Control shift d and then delete this excess i'll also zoom into it i think it needs a scaling of 400 like that so it should go from here to okay so it needed a scaling of 300 sorry so after this video 
after it has rolled it will it will get into this screenshot so i think i got this screenshot at this mark so make sure to uh, label your items and you know where to place your items so i'll go back so right after here we'll go into this one and then we'll start zooming in onto the photo which we wanted to and it was this photo uh, right up here so again hold shift kill and position keyframes enable them so this should be our first position and then going forward we shall scale into this picture and then use my position arrows to locate so here's the picture you can move it around using your mouse so i'll have to scale a bit so it will go from here and then it will zoom in and right where the zooming ends we bring in now the hd version of the picture so here it is i'll bring it i'll also drop it down and then i'll bring it right here so let's kill it I will also put it right above this other clip and then I'll reduce the opacity. So that this is what I mean. I want to place it such that it's almost uh, perfect to the initial picture like that. So I'll have the opacity back to 100 and then I'll move it right here. So it moves from this to this and then let's add a keyframe for scaling so that as soon as it gets to the picture it's not just a still image but something which is actually moving so it doesn't have to be a lot like that so let me just preview it okay so remember you need to look at uh, you need to zoom in perfectly so that you make sure to align everything uh, as required so that even this uh, HD picture doesn't begin after the video or before. So this is a bit seamless. Also remember on most of your keyframes, remember to put them on easy ease. So I'll put them on easy ease and also these other ones on easy ease. If you put easy ease on one of the keyframes, make sure to also enable it on the other. Like in this example, I had only enabled keyframes for scaling. And it was a little bit weird until I did the same for the position keyframe. One thing I would also add on to this, I would uh, do something small. In case you don't need this transition looking very harsh, we can click on these two and then you can pre-compose them. Let me name that pre-comp1. I'll also do the same one on this other one. I'll do pre-comp2. And then right in the middle where these two transition, I'll add something in between, some keyframe, just to give it, just to give it some sort of, yeah. So I'll enable keyframes so that right in the middle we have the brightness at 100 and somewhere here I have it back to zero and, and after it has transitioned it goes back to zero. So let me press you so that you can see these keyframes. I want it to come like this so that you can have that white flash which makes it almost unrecognizable. So I'll do the same on this end. I'll add a brightness and contrast and right where it transitions, right here, I'll add a keyframe from brightness, put it at max and then almost two frames before, put it to zero and the other side to zero. So you can space out your keyframes uh, however you like it. Just make sure it adds up. So we can preview this. And then it goes like this and then goes into the other one. That's it. I hope you've gotten the gist of doing this. If you need to zoom into other photos, you'll have to sort of follow the same procedure and you should be able to find something perfect like this. If you made it this far, thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the content, kindly give it a like. If you happen to have something you'd like to add on to this video or any suggestions or questions, kindly leave them down in the description box and i'm very happy to interact with you guys my name is danny james see you in the next video cheers